I am Alfred Bundy. Welcome to this special edition of Meet the Leaders. We're here in Atlantic City at the 103rd gathering of the New Jersey League of Municipality Convention. One of my special guests today is none other than the Honorable Jamal Holly. Hey, let me ask you something that we need to chat about a little bit about. It's certainly gun control. I just wanted to see, you have any new common sense ideas related to that? Well, I mean, New Jersey's leading the nation. I was very proud to sponsor legislation along with uh, our majority leader, Lou Greenwald, uh, that will put uh, guns at the top of our priority list. We have some of the strictest gun control uh, bills we and do. laws in the, in the nation. And just the other day, uh, Governor Murphy stepped it up another notch uh, with signing new legislation on uh, ghost guns. And so I'm very proud of the work we've done here in New Jersey. Uh, it is evident that we are leading the country, uh, and we're going to continue on that. Um, making sure that we protect our residents. Another thing too, we're always concerned about protecting Jersey values, but we also got to protect immigrants. Where you are, where are you related to immigration, sanctuary city, sanctuary state? Not what do you think? Yeah, well, I've been a mayor, and you know, you have to take things to a local level. I mean, it is important that we take care of those individuals that come into our communities. Uh, I think our immigration laws can be strengthened. I think there needs to be a fair and open process for those individuals who want to come here. Uh, but as a mayor, you know, my goal as a former mayor and my goal now as a, as a legislator is to ensure that we protect them and ensure that they have a home here once they're here. Legalization of marijuana. Some people say we don't use even recreational marijuana because that's suggest that we're really for the young people, but where are you at about this issue? We know the governor has us high on his agenda. Uh, what do you think? Al, as I advocated for the legalization, it wasn't about marijuana. As you know, as well as I know, is that marijuana has been a part of our communities for a very long time. It's something that just didn't just pop up. But my goal, my focus has been the social justice, to make sure that we allow expungements to those individuals who have been burdened on this so-called war on drugs and allow opportunities for minority and women and veterans to get into the business if they choose so. And so my efforts have been just about expungement and my efforts have been about social justice and social equity to ensure sure individuals have an opportunity to get into the business. But now, marijuana has been around for a very long time in our communities, and this is nothing new to us. Now, on the social equity side, there's already concerns that it may cost you one, two million dollars to really get a shot at having a dispensary or getting into the business big time, which, as you know, is a form of redlining or putting people of color or those who don't have a lot of money, they don't have a shot to get into business. What do you think? Well, like anything, there's myths, and that's a myth. Um, and as I advocate, it's about providing special opportunities for individuals, minorities, uh, women, uh, veterans. And so that myth of, of a million dollar licenses, two million dollars, is certainly a myth. We have in the draft bill that will soon be public, uh, conditional licenses, micro businesses in the high impacted areas that have been burdened on this so-called war on drugs. So there's going to be a wide range of opportunities for minorities and women and veterans. And we also included in the bill a certain office that will specifically be in the marijuana control division that will specifically be designed there in that office to ensure that the licenses are spread fairly across the board for minorities, women, and veterans. This is very good to hear about by the way, we need to get that message out more. We got to make sure that people are more aware of that. Now, at the same time, people are concerned that crime could in increase because it right now looks to be a cash carrying business uh, if we legalize marijuana. Where are we at as far as that discussion? I don't think crime is going to increase, but the facts and the numbers don't lie. And 88 people every single day are being arrested for low-level possessions of marijuana. And those people have been African-American men who look like me. And so it is now time to provide them some relief now that we realize that the so-called war on drugs wasn't really real, um, and provide them with uh, some relief and give them an opportunity, just like everyone else, to get into the business to do it legally. So I don't think that uh, crime is going to increase, but I think we're going to allow ourselves to have a level playing field for African-American men who have been targeted, and the numbers don't lie. Assembly, we don't have a lot of time left, but tell me one thing you'd like to work on with the governor or see in next year's budget that would help your community. Um, I'm an EOF student, and education is very important for me. 
Uh, and as a, a EOF uh, recipient in my younger days in undergraduate, I would like for us to continue to fund EOF and increase EOF funding so that African American men and women and minorities and women and Hispanics have the opportunity to really go to college without that burden of them having a lot of money to pay when they get out. EOF worked for me. I'm sure EOF worked for a lot of individuals. It's time that we increase that EOF program and give other people an opportunity to grow. Let me just say that's the Educational Opportunity Fund. I am a yes. former EOF student and a former EOF director at Seton Hall, U Seton Hall University. So I understand very well. Amen. We are here in Atlantic City at the New Jersey League of Municipalities. My guest has been the Assemblyman uh, Jamal Holland.